It is Roll As You Go book off with on week. I am so excited. Today is September 2nd and I've just decided that this weekend and this coming week are going to be my Roll As You Go week. I did set a TBR for book off with on and I'll link that up here above but I just really really wanted to do a Roll As You Go week. I thought that that would be a lot of fun but I knew that you guys probably wanted to see a TBR so I decided to do both. Do I have time for this? No. But we're going to do it anyway. So I'll do the first roll with you guys here in just a second. But if you're not sure what Becca's Bookopolathon is, it's hosted by Becca in the Books. It's her TBR game that she plays. And in September, she does a big month-long readathon where we play with her. And obviously, this started yesterday. So we are well within our window to do the Roll As You Go week. Becca's actually doing sprints right now for Patreons to kind of kick off the month. So I'm going to do my first roll, find out the book, and then go get started on that. Okay. So I know I've already done a TBR for Bookopolathon, but I'm going to be doing a Roll As You Go week. So we're going to restart on Go, and let's do roll number one and see what we're starting the week with. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chance card. Of course I don't have any of those ready, so let me go make some chance cards really quick. Okay, so these have been shuffled. It includes a couple on my current TBR that I'm not really in the mood for and some books that I was really, really hoping to be able to get on this Roll As You Go week. So let's see what we get. Oh. Well, you guys can't really see that, but it's Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. This is Rise Pick for the Witches Brew for the month. So I guess we're reading Heartbones. Okay, so we got Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. Like I said, this is Rise Witches Brew pick. And this, I'm not exactly sure what it's about. I know that it's a hard-hitting contemporary. I don't think it's super romantic. And Rye said that it made her cry. And it is her favorite Colleen Hoover book to date. So I'm excited to read it. It's one of the few of hers that I have not read. So I definitely need to get on it. I don't own this book, so I will be reading it as a Kindle version. And as soon as I manage to get it done, I will come back and we'll do another roll. Okay, we forgot the camera today and we're doing impromptu Starbucks runs, so I figured I would just camera, phone camera film. That's okay, that's okay. So we're about to go in Starbucks. It is September 2nd and as you all have probably seen and know, the pumpkin stuff and fall favorites are back at Starbucks. So I am going to try the pumpkin cream cold brew for the first time. I am not a big fan of pumpkin. Like I don't like pumpkin pie or anything like that. So we're going to see how this goes. I've heard I need to try it. It's really good. It's not too sweet. So we're going to, we're going to go try it. We're going to try it. I'm a little nervous, but fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I'll be back to let you know what I think. Okay, pumpkin cream cold brew acquired. I can already smell the cinnamon. It smells like fall. Okay, are we ready? Let's see. Not bad, not bad. There's not, it's not super strong on the pumpkin-y. And honestly, I am still a little bit snotty from having COVID last week. So it may be that I just can't taste it, but that's pretty good. I like that. Win. Okay, so normally I wouldn't film updates in front of the shelves like this, but I actually, it's been a few hours and I finished Heartbones. We started sprints three hours ago and I read the whole thing during sprints. So since I haven't updated you at all, didn't tell you what Heartbones is about. It is about Bea who is 19 years old and her mother is an addict and she has been forced to really fend for herself ever since she was a kid. Her dad really isn't in the picture and she has gotten a volleyball scholarship and is dying to just make her own way out of the town that she lives in. But when she gets home from work one day, she, trigger warnings, just kind of be aware of this. She finds her mother has died of an overdose and she's being evicted. So she's got to call her dad and go stay with him until she starts school that fall. And when she gets there, she gets a new stepsister and she meets a boy. And it's really just about the summer and 
her learning a lot and really kind of finding out what support looks like. I liked it a lot. It was a romance. I thought it was going to be more of a contemporary, but it's a hard-hitting contemporary with a lot of romance in it, and I had a great time. It is lots and lots of trigger warnings, so just look all of that stuff up. I liked the message a lot. There was one thing I'm going to put like a little spoiler tag. It's not a big deal, but just, just in case you care. Her mother was a meth addict, and that was a huge part of her story and why she was the way that she was. And at some point, since we're spoiler tagged here, when Samson gets arrested, she cannot sleep and her heart is broken. So she asks her stepmother for an ambient and her stepmother gives her one and then we never talk about it again. And I was just like, ambient's an addictive medication. I don't feel like that was a good choice because it insinuated that you can just give somebody, I don't know, I just didn't like the way it was done. I felt like either it should have been talked about and addressed that that's what we were doing, or we should have just taken a Tylenol PM and gone ahead with it. It really wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't something that needed to be there. So I just didn't love that part. Something else that kind of bugs me just a little bit about this one was the relationship was really quick. It happens over the course of a couple of months, and it is so strong in a couple of months that she hangs on for years. And I don't know, I, I teenagers fall in love really fast. People in general can fall in love that fast and have that strong of a connection in that short amount of time. And I did feel their relationship. They had some really good chemistry, but I can kind of see where that might bug people that it was a little bit quick. Overall, I think I'm giving this one a four star. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Rye, for encouraging me to read it because I don't know when I would have picked it up otherwise. So thank you so much for having me read it. So day one of Bookopolathon, Roll As You Go week, and we've already finished a book. So I guess I will do a, another roll really quick before bed, pick a book, and that way I will know what I'm going to be reading first thing in the morning. Okay, pardon the slightly janky angle. We're just, I'm not resetting up this entire camera again, so we're just going to kind of work with it. So for Roll As You Go, roll number two, let's see what we get. A four. One, two, three, four. Published or set before 1999. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do a think on that one. I will get back to you. Okay, that was really, really hard. Really hard. Um, I scoured and really the only thing that I could think of was like pre- his, like historic fantasy vibes and I don't know I just don't feel like that really counts because it's not set in our world and I don't really own a whole lot of books that are set before night or are published before 1999 and if I do they are monsters and honestly I'm not really sure that I have many that were because like one of the older books that I can think of is like Robin Hobb, and that was published in 2014. The next in the Dresden Files was 20, 2006. The only one that I have is The Dragon Reborn, and we're not reading that for a Roll As You Go week. There's no way. So probably what I'm going to do is Deb had a really good suggestion. She found where for Clown in a Cornfield... Um, the library journal said that it is marketed for teens, but adults that are familiar with classic horror slasher movies of the 1980s and 1990s should find it appeal. And I do have A Clown on the Cornfield 2, which I have not read and just came out. And Deb said, well, you didn't have a pre-1999 book, so you went with the vibes. And honestly, I feel like that's probably what I'm going to have to do is go with the vibes, either in fantasy because it vibes an older setting or Clan in a Cornfield because it vibes an older setting. But either way, I don't really think there's a huge difference. And I'm in a thriller horror mood, not a chunky fantasy mood. So... This is what we're going to go with. This is the second in the Clan of the Cornfield series by Adam Caesar. I think this will be a super quick read. So once I have kind of gotten started with it and have some thoughts, I will check back in. This took way, way longer than I thought it would, but I think I'm happy enough with this now. It still feels slightly like cheating or at least a major stretch, but 
I just really don't have anything and rolling again would require me to pick two books which would then not be as much fun for the roll as you go vlog. So we're doing pre-1999 vibes. If you're mad at me for it, I'm sorry. Don't tell Becca. Okay, I'll see you in the morning. Hello. Good morning. I just wanted to say that I have read nothing. I probably won't read much today, to be honest. I might maybe get a couple of chapters done before my mom gets here in about an hour, but today is Saturday and today is a very, very busy day. As you can tell, I have my Roll Tide Roll shirt on. We do football hard here in the South. It's like a full day endeavor. It's 9 a.m. and David has probably already been up for like 30 minutes and got game day on and it's just, we, we do a lot. We do a lot of football down here in the South. Alabama doesn't play until six, so got a decent amount of the day to go before then. He'll be watching games all day. Um, Mom and I are actually gonna go get our last pedicure of the season, and I'm gonna go get my nails done because they're getting kind of long and getting on my nerves. And then we might do some holiday decor shopping, and if we do, I will let you know, and I will show you clips of that. I also may try to talk her into getting a pumpkin spice cold brew because I think she would like it and she's never had one before. So we will see what the day holds. It's gonna be a busy one, but it's gonna be fun. It's fall, I'm so excited. It's also Labor Day weekend, so we may do some grilling out and stuff this weekend. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be a fun time and I'm gonna take you with me. Again, I'm gonna be reading Clown in a Cornfield. I slept on it and feel like it's an acceptable book for pre-1999 vibes, but let's go get the day started. Time for Bagopathon Roll As You Go, number three. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Favorite trope. Okay, ignore the super messy house behind me. It is Monday, Labor Day, and I've done a whole lot of nothing today. David was here, we watched some TV, we grilled out, we were super lazy and <laughs> slept in, so I've done nothing. I think you guys just saw me do my third roll, and we will go over what I'm going to be reading for that here in just a second. But first, let's talk about Clown in a Cornfield. This one, I ended up enjoying. It was exactly what I expected it to be. But unfortunately, because of that, there were some things that I did not love about it. This is obviously a continuation of the slasher story that we had from book one. And I like slasher stories. I like slasher movies. I think that they are fun for what they are. So I'm going to probably end up giving this one like a three and a half, maybe a four star because I was very entertained. But Ollie, can you not? But I just, 
it was so repetitive. I mean, it was the same thing over and over and over again. It was the same thing from book one all over again. So while it was entertaining, it just, there's not a lot of substance to it. It's not focusing on the characters and super deep backstories. I mean, it tries, but just doesn't do a great job with characters or backstory. There's no real plot and it's just not super memorable. So if there was a motive behind all of the stuff that happened in book one, I don't remember it. And if there was a motive really mentioned much in book two, it was just kind of glossed over and that kind of irritated me. I feel like if you're going to have a slasher story, at least have a motive for the slashing. But other than that, I, I did have a good time with it. It's fast. It's easy. It's fun. Probably about a three and a half. It's a great read for Halloween. Um, so... For my third role, you saw me get to pick a favorite trope, and I had a little bit of a hard time for this one, but then I remembered that Amari and the Great Game has just come out, and games and contests are things that I love in books, and I've been dying to get this one on the TBR and just have not had any room for it at all. So we are going to do Amari and the Great Game. If you don't know what Amari is about, it is about our main character, Amari, whose brother has gone missing, and she's determined to figure out what has happened to him, but her mom's still wants her to do well in school and to kind of go about her life. And she finally figures out that he is actually a part of this supernatural investigations. And there is these wizards called Night Brothers that are on the hunt um, and destroying kind of the supernatural community. And she suddenly becomes a part of this. It was so much fun. I do agree with the men in black um kind of comparison i thought that the first book was so much fun an easy five star read it in a day so i am so excited to get to book two because i've heard it's even better and it has a game element which is one of my favorite trips in books so it works out perfectly once i've read a little bit of that i'll come back and check in with you guys and tomorrow is a long drive i don't have it on audio so i'm not sure if i'll be listening to anything else tomorrow i need to get some book club picks done so i may end up doing that but when I do get some more of Amari done, I will check back in and hopefully I love it as much as I did the first one. Okay, so I lied. It's Tuesday and you remember how I said I had a really long drive and I didn't have an audiobook for Amari, so I didn't think I was going to get Amari done today? Well, I found an audiobook and I finished Amari and the Night Brother or Amari in the Great Game. The drive home was probably the worst drive home I've ever experienced. It was a two hour drive. Well, about an hour and 45 minute drive that turned into a two hour and 15 minute drive because it was raining so hard that I could not see and the rest of the time people just did not know how to drive and they were being idiots. So that was fun, but it gave me a lot of audiobook time. So I am done with Amari. I really enjoyed it. I haven't put it through call pile yet, but I think it's probably going to come out at a four star. I didn't love it quite as much as I did the first one, which was sad. But I was still very, very entertained. I still had a really good time with it. It just, it didn't have quite the charm that the first book did. There was a lot of moments where I was like, wait, that, that makes absolutely no sense. Why would you not do it this way instead of doing it that way? And so that did take me out of the story a little bit and will likely bring down the score a little just because the logic was just not quite there. But either way, it was still a really, really fun time. I had a great time with the story. I love being back with Amari and her friends. And I'm curious to see where book three goes. So super, super big success so far for Bookoplathon. I think I have had a four star, a four star, and a three and a half star. So that's all awesome. So let's go see what I'm going to be reading for book number four. Okay, let's see what I get for Becca's Bookoplathon Roll As You Go number four. nine okay one two three four five six seven eight nine autumn heck yeah okay really quickly before my camera battery dies i got autumn for roll number four and i have options and i don't know which one i want to pick so first option is finley donovan knocks him dead this is the second in the finley donovan series following a mom that accidentally gets mistaken for a hit woman for hire and her life kind of unravels. I do have the audiobook for this one, so this is a possibility. I think the first one sets place kind of in autumn and I don't know, it just gave me cozy mystery vibes, which screams autumn to me. So this is a possibility. And then we also have Old Country by Matt 
Curie and Harrison Curie. This one is a recommendation from one of my patrons, Sammy, and it says, based on the Reddit sensation, a horror thriller of a young couple who buys the perfect secluded house only to discover a terror within. So this one obviously sounds very untumnal and Right now, I'm not 100% sure if I have a vlog to read this for for the upcoming weeks, like Halloween time, so not sure about this one. And then last but not least, one that I did really want to get on this vlog, so it's a very, very high possibility, and that is Empty Smiles by Katherine Arden. This is the fourth and final book in the Small Spaces series, following Ollie, who keeps getting herself into trouble and is trying to defeat the smiling man. So what I've done is since I just can't decide, I've put all three of these books up on a poll for my Patreon, just a quick emoji poll. And I will let you know once, th once they decide what I am going to be reading for this fourth roll. It is currently Tuesday and this ends on Thursday. So depending on what they pick, this could end up being the last book for the vlog. So I definitely want to pick a good one. My fate is in their hands. So I will let you know what they pick once they pick it. Talk to you later. Okay. So I might have lied when picking my last book. I completely forgot that I have got an arc of The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. This is the second book and the sequel companion novel to X Hex that came out last year. And it comes out on September 20th. So I feel like it's a perfect time to include that in a vlog. And I'm so excited to get to it. And this is following Gwen, and she is perfectly happy leaving her life in Graves Glen. She, her mom, and her cousin, and I believe it was the cousin was the first uh, character that we followed, have now formed a new powerful coven, and they're running a successful shop. Again, this it's kind of early, I feel like, a little bit for Witchy, but at the same time, I really, really do want to read this one. And again, I don't know when I'm going to get to it otherwise, so... I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe. I'm thinking I might listen to this one. We'll see. Uh-oh, my battery's about to die. We'll make this quick. I am about, I said we'd make this quick and now I don't know how far into the book I am. 29% um, of the way through The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. And let me just say, this was a great decision to go ahead and read. It's way too early for this kind of witchy Halloween set book, but I don't care because I am just dying for the spooky, cozy, witchy vibes. And this is just putting me in the spirit and making my heart so very happy. So I don't even care. I don't care. This is the companion novel to The X Hex, and it is an enemies to lovers romance about our main character, Gwen, who runs the this witchy shop with her mom and her cousin's new husband, Reese. His brother is coming back to town and he is opening up a shop of his own. Their banter cracks me up and their like competition between each other and just the mutual pining. Oh, it's amazing. I am loving it so far. I don't even know if it's that great. I just know that I'm having a great time and it is exactly what I wanted. So I'm just, I'm loving it. It's, it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. It's kind of crazy that this is the same author, Rachel Hawkins, that writes the thrillers because I don't love thrillers. I mean, the writing style is good, but the plots and the way that things move just are not my favorite. So it's interesting that I enjoy these books as much as I do. I'm just, I'm highly entertained. Are they the best form of literature ever? No, but I just, I have a great time and that's all that really matters and it's putting me in the mood. So Great choice. I'll let you guys know when I'm finished what my final thoughts are. This probably will be the last roll for this vlog because today is Wednesday and it only goes through tomorrow and I don't think I'm going to get this completed, this book finished and another book tomorrow. So I think this will probably be the last one. If for some reason I get a wild hair and I want to try to roll again and get a super short book in, I'll let you know, but don't hold your breath because I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. So I'm done with work. I'm actually going to go watch Bachelorette reruns because I did not watch this last season from the beginning. So now I'm catching it from the beginning and trying to avoid all spoilers. And it's kind of a roulette. I got rudely interrupted by my camera battery and I don't remember what I was saying. Something about I think this is going to be my last roll because I, it's just, it's Wednesday and I don't have enough time because this ends on Thursday really to read another book. But if I change my mind and I decide to do another roll, you guys will see it. And I will check back in 
once I had finished the kiss curse. I think that was what I was saying. If not, just ignore everything you just heard and we'll, we'll check back later. It is actually the end of Becca's book Aquathon. As you guys probably just saw, I did get to go to the bookstore, as usual. Shockingly, did not buy anything. It was actually quite a sad moment. I was gonna get Fairy Tale by Stephen King and decided that I was not gonna read it anytime soon, so there was no point in buying it right now. And then I was gonna get From Below by Darcy Coates, but I didn't love The Haunting of Ashburn House. I've actually DNF'd that one twice, so I figured needed to probably do like library audio or ebook before buying another one of her books, so definitely gonna do that, hopefully for spooky season. Was gonna get Daisy Darker, they didn't have it. Was gonna get The Witches of Moonshine Manor, they didn't have it. So just wasn't, wasn't as successful of a shopping trip as I was hoping it would be. Come on, buddy. Come on, come on, there you go. <laughs> um, anyway, so I didn't pick anything up from the bookstore. I may do like an online shopping trip sometime here in the future because I want some books, but I just, I didn't want to pay full price for something I knew I wouldn't get, wasn't going to read right away. So let's talk about The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. This is the companion novel to The X-Hex, which I enjoyed a lot last year. This one, I don't know if I'm just really, really in the mood for it or if it's better than The X-Hex, but I'm having a great time. There are some things in this book that are a little illogical. I was like, wait, are we not going to circle back around to that thing? But overall, I really have had a good time with it. It's got really good banter. It's not, it's trying to be an enemies to lovers, but I don't feel like it's a true enemies to lovers because the two main characters quickly 
don't hate each other anymore. Um, but I did enjoy their banter and the pining and the will they want they that kind of happened in there. I just, I thought it was a great time. It was exactly what I wanted right now and it's super quick, easy. So I think I'm going to give this one a four star. I had a fantastic time. The small town vibes with the Halloween. I know it's only what, September 9th, but I'm so ready. I can't hardly stand it. So it was exactly what I wanted. Therefore, this vlog I feel like was a huge success. When is the last time that I had essentially four four star reads in a week? I can't tell you. Like, I don't know when the last time that was. So Heartbones, I ended up giving four stars. Really enjoyed. It is a more emotional book from Colleen Hoover. It was Rise Pick from my um, Witch's Brew Mug, and it was also a chance card for Becca's book Bookopathon that was roll number one. Roll number two was before 1999, so I went with Vibes from Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. This one definitely has pre-2000s slasher movie vibes. I ended up giving this one a three and a half star. I really enjoyed it. It was exactly what I expected, but it was extremely repetitive and didn't have a lot of like plot, so didn't get as high of a rating from me. And then the next one was Amari and the Great Game. And I really, really enjoyed that one as well. It's the sequel to Amari and the Night Brothers, which I loved and gave five stars last year. This one I didn't love quite as much as Amari and the Night Brothers, but still gave it a four star, still had a really good time. It was for the favorite trope. And I used the competition aspect for the favorite trope, and sadly, the competition was very minimal. I was expecting it to be a lot more prominent because it was called The Great Game, but still had a good time. Love the friendships in this book and the lessons that it's giving us. And then the last role was Autumn, for which we did Kiss Curse. You guys just heard me talk about that one. Loved it. So one three and a half star and three four star reads for this vlog huge success. I'm going to have to do TBR Bluff Roll As You Go at some point because this was just so much fun and so hugely successful. I got four books done this week. So let me know down in the comments if you guys are participating in Becca's book up -thon. Are you doing Roll As You Go or have you already done all of your rolls and made the rolls be ever in your favor? I will link Becca down below so that you guys can check it out if you haven't already heard about book up -thon. If you want to check out, if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, there is a link to my Patreon down below. Come join the Monster Mash, as well as links to my Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.